In FlexSim, process flows allow you to build and control the logic that will drive your model simulation. To create a process flow, begin with FlexSim open to your model. In the toolbar, expand process flow to choose the type. In this example, select add a general process flow. The process flow panel opens. Notice that the process flow properties display on the right. While on the left, the library includes activities to build your process flow. Activities are the building blocks of a process flow, representing different actions, events, or decisions that will occur. Each activity has its own set of properties that determine how the activity functions in your flow. As you build your process flow, activities are activated sequentially, from top to bottom. The object that activates each activity is known as a token. To see what a token looks like, here, a source is added to the process flow. And by skipping ahead, the token appears as a little green ball. A token is an object that at its most basic level, represents a bundle of data that will be moving through the process flow. Tokens can be used to represent both physical and abstract items flowing through the system, like operators or even processors, within a model. When a token enters or flows into an activity, it will activate that activity. This can include waiting a certain amount of time before the token is allowed to exit that activity, writing data onto the token by adding a label, or even causing an operator in an attached 3D model to load an item. Tokens are generated by one of the four token creation activities in the process flow library and can only be created while the model is running. Now, explore how a process flow is built. To add an activity, click and drag the activity, such as delay, from the library. Alternatively, you can double-click in the process flow panel to open the quick add library and then select an activity. Once two or more activities are added, you can connect them by clicking and dragging one to meet the other until they snap together. Two or more linked activities are known as an activity block and represent a sequence of steps that can be managed as a single unit. In this example, a third activity is added to the block as well. Remember to place your activities in the correct order since they will activate from top to bottom. If you place an activity in a block incorrectly, you can disconnect it by clicking the scissors icon between the activities you want to separate. Or you can press and hold control as you click and drag an activity to a new location, in or away from the block. You can also connect activities or activity blocks by creating a connector. Hover the cursor over the edge of an activity until the chain icon appears. Then, click and drag to extend a connector line. Alternatively, select an activity, then click and drag one of the white dots. To disconnect two activities, select the connector and press delete. Or click the connector near the unintended activity and drag it to the intended activity. Activities can generally have only one outgoing connector. Here, you can see that drawing a second outgoing connector replaces the first one. However, they can have multiple connectors flowing in. Next, in the display section of the process flow library, select container to view the available options. Containers are used to organize or differentiate tasks or activities in a process flow. In this example, click and drag the process container into the process flow panel. Activities and activity blocks can be moved into containers. And now when you move the container, the block travels with it. This is especially helpful when you have large groups of activities that you want to move together. You can add connectors to containers, just as you did with activities. Activities in the container receive tokens that flow to that container. Note, however, that you can only have one activity or activity block inside the container that receives tokens. Otherwise, tokens will not know which activity to go to and will produce an error. Similarly, you can create a connection out from a container to other activities. Now, run the simulation. In the simulation control bar, click Reset, and then click Run to view the process flow. Notice that tokens flow from the source through the connector into the activities in the container, and then out of the container to the next activity. Now, you can begin creating a process flow of your own.